In early spring of 2021, I bought a One Affinity Woodworker CNC online. It was going to be later that fall before it was actually delivered, so I had a lot of time to familiarize myself with Carbide Create, which is the software I planned on using with the One Affinity. I designed a variety of products, teaching myself different skills using the CNC, but really until I got a chance to get the machine, put it together, and try them out, I didn't know how well it was all going to work. I've been very pleased with the Carbide Create program and also with the Onefinity Woodworker. Everything from both the machine to the, the software I'm using is really easy to use. I've been able to make a lot of the things that I designed ahead of time come to life. I've also made a lot of mistakes along the way. I'm going to share with you the first three mistakes that I made with the CNC machine. Hopefully you can learn from me and not make the same mistakes. I put the one finity together and immediately wanted to make a cut. I went and grabbed a piece of two x four that had been a cast off from a previous product project, updated the dimensions and carb I create and let her rip. Much to my surprise, I didn't break anything. The cut went completely as planned. Well, almost as planned. You can see that the design and the software was centered, but it was not centered when it was done cutting. I assumed that I had measured incorrectly, and over the next few days I did a few more test cuts and noticed that none of them were positioned quite like I designed. You can see how being just a little bit off is now permanently on display on this wasteboard. So what was my mistake? I just accepted that the pre-programmed dimensions and measurements would be accurate within the CNC program and I didn't double check. Turns out the probe dimensions were just a bit off. That combined with my measuring likely being a little bit off and yeah. Things don't cut like you have planned. So how did I fix it? I bought a caliper. My buddy Dan suggested that I get a Minotoyo. I don't know if I'm saying that right. So I looked it up online and... <laughs> so I looked up a cheaper caliper online and got it in the mail a few days later. I updated the size of the probe in the one finity, which was really easy to do. I also began measuring my cuts more precisely. And just like that, problem solved. I tried really hard to learn as much about the CNC and carbide create as I could before the CNC came. I really wanted to hit the ground running, but since I had no previous experience with a CNC or with a design software, there was a lot to learn. Before each cut, I had a load of questions going through my mind. Did I measure the piece of wood accurately? Did I update the dimensions in the software? Did I remember to adjust the depth of the cuts? Did I remember to save the file after my last edit? Did I properly secure the piece to the wasteboard? Do I have the correct bit in the router? Did I tighten the collet sufficiently so as to not send the bit flying? Do I remember how to probe for X, Y, and Z? Since I changed the bit, do I need to probe for X, Y, and Z again? Eventually, I just had to hit the play button and hope for the best. On one occasion, I checked everything off of my mental checklist. I watched as the bit lowered, and that's when I remembered the last thing on my list that I forgot to do. Turn on the router! It was too late. The XY motion started, and that bit snapped faster than Thanos after he got gutted on the floor. I knew it would happen at some point, but I didn't expect it on one of my first cuts. How could I let that happen? My buddy Dan told me that in diving, they call this task loading. You have so much stuff going on your mind that you're bound to miss a step. It made me feel a little bit better knowing that I was just in the garage and not 100 feet below the surface of the sea. But then I went online to buy a replacement bit, and if you haven't had the joy of spending that much money on a tiny piece of metal due to a tiny oversight, it makes you feel kind of like this. When I built the table for the CNC, I knew that I needed a waste board and I knew that I needed a way to clamp the pieces down to it. I'd seen some people simply use double-sided tape, others use a threaded waste board and a variety of side pressure clamps, and still others insert T-tracks into their waste board so that they could use top pressure clamps. For as much as I researched, I really wasn't sure what the best option was, so I decided to start with double-sided tape. This has actually worked out really well for the most part. I was cutting some coasters from a piece of oak. I was using a quarter inch down cut bit. The power of the router and the bit was too much for the double sided tape. And about halfway through the cut, the piece of wood came loose, shifted. And boom goes the dynamite. More double sided tape than I used might have helped. Cider top pressure would have clearly helped. For now, 
I'm sticking with double-sided tape and just finding other ways to add extra stability when I think it might be needed. In the future, I may have to try out a threaded waste board or a T-Track system, but I have reservations about both, but that's due to... When I was cutting out some pumpkins for Thanksgiving, I completely forgot to adjust the thickness of the project piece in Carbide Create. The piece was thinner than I had initially planned for, and this happened. If I had threaded inserts or a T-Track system, I most definitely would have run the bit into them, and that would have broken the bit, so pretty much all three of my first mistakes would have happened again, but all at the same time. Despite these errors, I've had much more success than I have had failures. If you're getting into CNC, hopefully by sharing this with you, you'll avoid some of the same mistakes I've made. Until next time, go get lost in the garage.